Well, we've discussed adding fractions, subtracting fractions. Let's now go to multiplying fractions. Now, just a quick note here. If I were to give you some, oh, let's say some big numbers. 4,281, 3,968. And without a calculator, just you, your brain, your pencil and paper. I were to give you four choices. Add those two numbers or subtract those two numbers or multiply those or divide those. Well, you'd probably pick addition. Adding those two, that wouldn't take much time. Subtracting, a little bit harder, but not too bad. Multiplying, oh my goodness. To multiply these, oh, oh you know, eight times one is eight and eight, oh goodness, it would take a long time. Dividing, do long division on this, 4,281 divided by three, oh, take you about four years, you wouldn't get it right still. Well, big numbers, that's the way it is. What about fractions though? If I give you two fractions, one third and four fifth, and ask you to either add those, subtract those, multiply those, or divide those, which is the quickest, which is the easiest? And the correct answer is multiplying. Because when you multiply two fractions, what you don't have to do is you do not have to find a common denominator. That eliminates that entire step. All you have to do is you multiply the two top numbers. Well, let's see. One times four is four. And multiply the two bottom numbers. Three times five is 15. Well, looky there. That's the answer. That's all you're doing. I'm going to try to make this hard, but that won't be easy. Uh, two times one. Multiply the two numerators. Two times one is two. Three times four is 12. Now notice something. And get this junk out of the way. I'm so sorry. Uh, we have to, we have to do what? You don't leave it that way. What if this were the answer to a quiz problem? You wouldn't leave it that way. You would reduce it to lowest terms. What can we divide two by and 12 by both? Well, two. Divide two by two, we get one. Divide 12 by two, we get six. So the final answer is one sixth. But now notice something. This next thing, if you catch on to this, will save you a lot of time and effort and aggravation and frustration. Before we multiply, notice something. What's so nice also about multiplying fractions. Any number on the top, if there's something in common with any other number on the bottom, we can divide the same thing. In other words, look, there's a two up here on this fraction. There's a four on the bottom of the other fraction. But both the two and the four can be divided by two, can't they? Yes, they can. You said yes, didn't you? So if we, before we multiply, let's do that. Let's divide, although they're on opposite fractions. This is on this one, that's on this one, it's okay. Let's divide both this and this by two. If we divide this by two, that's one. If we divide this by two, that's two. Now let's multiply. Now this is no longer two, it's one. That is no longer four, that's two. So now one times one is one. Three times two is six. If you do this first, you will never have to reduce your final answer. Let me show you further. Three-fourths times four-fifths. Well, we can technically you multiply the two numerators. Three times four, well, let's see here, that's 12. Four times five, that's 20. But now you need to reduce this. And what can we divide both those by? Well, two, that'll work. That's not the biggest we can do. How about four? That'll work also. If we divide both these by four, divide this by four, that's three. Divide this by four, and that's five. But took all that effort. Here's what you ought to do. Now, I'll never know. I don't really care. But trust me, if you get this down, it's going to be much easier. Before we ever multiply, notice, there's a four on top. That's a four on the bottom of the other fraction. It's okay. 
even though this, if that four were up here, this four, well, it doesn't matter, but they're on opposite other fractions, but that's okay. If we can divide both those by the same number, let's do it. Of course, if we can divide both those by four, you can think of this in different ways. You can think, hey, those four just cancel each other out. Or think of it this way. Four divided by four is one. This four divided by four is one. Now, what's left? Three times one is three. One times five is five. So if you reduce and cancel before you multiply, you'll never have to reduce your final answer. And we'll work on more of these later. Let me give you one to work on during the little short break between this video and the next video, whether it's two minutes or two days. Well, let's say we have uh, six ninths times three twelfths. Now, let me give you a little coaching here. Technically, it's six times three is whatever that is. Nine times 12 is whatever that is. Then you gotta reduce those numbers. Oh man, is there something here that you can uh, want the top of one and the bottom of the uh, the same one or the other one? Hey, don't six and nine have something in common? Yeah, we can divide both those by three. Do three and 12 both have something in common? Yes, we can divide both of those by three. But look, what about the six on the top of this one and the 12 on the bottom of this one? I can divide both those by the same number. I can do that too. Divide those by six. Three and nine, I can divide both of those by three. So you have four choices. I can cancel this and this, or reduce this and this, or this and this one, or this one and this one, this one, this one. It doesn't matter. Well, I know it's not a whole lot of coaching, but Work on that during a little short break here. We'll do this one when we get back on the next video and see if you're catching on to what I just talked about, which is unlikely. That's my fault, not your fault.